have my timestamp for going. Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for March 27th, 2023. This is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things regarding CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time at 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these meetings, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonista's Discord role. There is a Google um, Docs notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find in that channel to find the latest doc, doc, notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate, but Canada can attend, you could leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. We hold the meeting in five parts. I'll go over them as we get to them. Um, okay, so I will start with community news. And uh, this is a selection of stuff from the circuit Python, the Python for microcontrollers newsletter that um, comes out tomorrow. So first up, um, let me put a timestamp in. Oops. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. First up, there are 100 uh, CircuitPython community libraries. Um, the CircuitPython community reached a big milestone together. Now, there are 100 libraries in the CircuitPython community bundled. Uh, CircuitPython libraries are separate files designed to work with CircuitPython code. So I want to distinguish between this community bundle, which contains libraries supported by members of the community, and the Adafruit uh, CircuitPython library bundle, which contains libraries that are uh, supported by Adafruit. Um, we really appreciate the community bundle and the fact that it's so large now. Uh, as Adafruit, we can't support all these libraries. Some of them are special purpose or pertain to products that we don't make. And we really appreciate everyone who works on the libraries in the community bundle. You can uh, find out what's in the bundle by going to uh, circuitpython.org slash libraries and looking at the bundles there. And there are pointers to what's in the various bundles. And then the next thing up is right here in the um, Discord community, we've reached 37,000 members, which is sort of unimaginably large. Um, and keeps growing like about 10 a day. Um, so we really appreciate everyone who's joined. Um, uh, Adafruit believes that Discord offers a unique way for Python on hardware folks, folks to connect. It's really been very successful. So I mentioned that um, these newsletters, the, these items come from the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter. Um, you can contribute to this newsletter uh, by opening a pull request on uh, GitHub. There are notes, there are pointers in the notes document for how to do that. Or you could send email to cpnews at adafruit.com, or you can tag us with uh, hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter. Any of those ways are great for getting news to us that to go as proposals for things to go in the newsletter. I really appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Okay. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is like a quantitative overview of the entire project with all kinds of numbers about how many things have happened. Um, 
it gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the CircuitPython core, the libraries, and Blinka. So first, overall. Um, in the past week, we had 45 pull requests merged by 18 authors. Um, a couple of new ones, Azgur Bostan um, is representing an organization that from Turkey that has uh, uh, um, contributed several new boards. Saintus is new, um, and uh, those are the people I recognize as new. There may be others. Uh, there were eight reviewers of those 45 pull requests, um, and there were 26 issues closed by 10 people and 12 opened by 12 people. And um, now let's go on to the core specifically, and Jeff can do will do that for us. Hello. Apparently my mic was open already. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so um, the core is the part of CircuitPython that is written in C, and it's based on MicroPython, and it's kind of where all the low-level stuff goes. And uh, last week we had 33 pull requests merged, which seems like just a huge number from 15 authors, including those two that uh, Dan was talking about earlier, and five reviewers. Thanks to, particularly to uh, Liz with City DIY, as well as MicroDev1 for doing those reviews. Um, we will find it very helpful, and it lets us land better tested changes in the core. In terms of pull requests, we have 20 open pull requests, of which about eight are not marked draft, and those range from one day to 404 days old, uh, 191 for the ones that aren't drafts. So um, if you're able to work on a draft PR that you opened, please do so. If it is out of date um, or you're not going to get to it, please feel free to close it and then reopen a fresh one at any time. And if you are waiting on something from us, please let us know so that we can help um, get all those changes into the CircuitPython core. Issues-wise, we saw 17 closed issues by six people and four opened by four people, which is a very nice decrease. Um, and this represents mostly the hard work of our pull request authors, although in some cases they may be closed because they were out of date or were support issues or other things like that. Anyway, that leaves us with 629 open issues, which we usually focus on using uh, GitHub's milestones. Uh, milestones show how Adafruit is prioritizing work on CircuitPython, although if you want to contribute to CircuitPython, you should feel free to work on whatever interests you. Uh, for 810, uh, for, well first for 80x we have zero open issues, which means that as far as we know, 80x is a really uh, stable release that is serving people's needs well, and if we uh, hear about bugs in version 8, then we will add them to that milestone. Otherwise, we're looking at 8.1.0, kind of the next feature release of CircuitPython, and we'd like to resolve 11 open issues before we release that. Um, and meanwhile, for uh, smaller items, we tag those with 8xx, and we've got a larger number, 70 open issues in that category. And finally, looking ahead to uh, the next kind of uh, breaking release for version 9, we have 21 open issues. Um, and uh, long-term, those issues where Adafruit's not prioritizing them, but uh, community, we welcome your work on it. We've got 500 of those issues. Uh, we've also got issues uh, tagged with uh, things like help wanted and uh, third party and maybe good first issue, maybe not good first issue. It's not listed here. Uh, anyway, so that's what's going on in the core. And I'll just uh, spoil it a little bit for you in the narrative. Dan hopes to release the next beta of 8.1, uh, hopefully this week. So that's what's going on in the core. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You. Thank you, Jeff. And I'll just note uh, part of the reason I closed a lot of open draft pull requests, mostly boards that had been, had stalled for one reason or another, and so uh, they could be reopened later in the future. And I also uh, did some triage and issues, which is why there are so many that were closed. But there were also a lot of fixes, which is really nice. Also. All right, uh, next up is um, the libraries. And Katni, are you able to read that? Yes, I am. So this section applies to all of the CircuitPython libraries, which includes the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and our community bundle. Um, so all libraries submitted by community members to that bundle as well. 
Uh, so across all of those repositories, we had 12 pull requests merged by six authors and five reviewers. Uh, there were three that were 30 days, 31 days or older, which was excellent to see that we're still keeping up with um, older PRs. And it leaves us with 39 open pull requests. Uh, there were nine issues closed by six people and five open by five people, leaving us with 600 open issues. 74 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, uh, you have a couple of options. If you're interested in reviewing, uh, Either way, visit circuitpython.org slash contributing. Um, if you're interested in reviewing, check out the list of open pull requests. Uh, if you have the hardware for something, test it. If you don't, um, then uh, take a look at the code, see if you see anything obvious. And um, uh, you, know, you can leave us a comment and let us know. And if that uh, works out for you, um, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the list of open issues. They are listed out uh, on the contributing page by uh, repository name, um, and you can search that and see whether there's anything you're interested in working on. Leave a comment, let us know uh, that you're working on it, and uh, we can help you out with any of that. If you're new to everything, um, which is to say uh, Git and GitHub, um, you, there is a guide available on uh, the Adafruit Learn system on uh, contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Um, and you'd wanna choose a good first issue. Those are issues identified uh, as issues that will work out for folks who might be new to things. And we're always available on Discord to help. So don't let that intimidate you. Um, just find something that interests you and we will help you contribute in a way that works for you. In terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, we had uh, 100, 3,970 downloads over 309 libraries. And the list of the top 10 downloads for this week are uh, in the notes. And library updates in the last seven days, we had a few updated libraries, but no new libraries. Um, and so uh, that's uh, where we are at the libraries. Okay, thank you, Katni. Okay, and next up is the Blinka section. Um, uh, Melissa will read that. Yeah. Uh, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Um, looks like the stats were kind of pulled before today, so it doesn't look like much activity, but there were zero pull requests merged. Um, looks like there are seven open pull requests uh, in, amongst other repositories. There was zero closed issues and three opened by three people. Um, it leaves a net of 97 open issues, and there were 14,391 PyPI downloads in the last week, 12,308 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 101 port. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Okay, next up is Hug Reports. Um, Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. All right, so uh, first up, I'll say what I, I'll give uh, my hug report. Uh, thanks to Foamy Guy and Narilak for noticing that the fetch submodules change, uh, which is a git submodules thing in the CircuitPython repo, didn't really work very, didn't work for uh, relatively current versions of Git that are in, say, the latest Ubuntu and things like that. Even though I had been using a more recent version of Git and it worked for me, I should have checked it more carefully. So I have more about that in status updates. And uh, next up is C. Grover, who's not at the meeting, so I'll read theirs. Uh, thanks to the team and community members who concentrated on improving CircuitPython support for ESP boards. Reliability and performance have improved dramatically. And the next up is DJ Devon 3. Um, uh, I'll read theirs also. Uh, thanks to Kat, the Anecdata, and Neridoc for helping me figure out a simple read switch issue for my mailbox project. If you use both digital I.O. switch direction and switch pull in the wrong order of operation, the pin will remain floating, which causes random erratic behavior. There was a consensus that the learn guide should be rewritten. Okay, we'll take note of that. 
Thanks to Skur and Hem and C. Grover for helping with the new custom board for my mailbox project. I was making it more complicated than it needed to be. Thank you for the great advice. And thanks to Katni for the excellent mailbox guide. Haven't even started on the lower, low power portion of the project, but it's great knowing the next step is already documented. And next step is Fumi Guide. All right, thanks, Dan. Um, hug reports this week for me. Thank you to uh, Nerdoc for helping identify the cause of the fetch submodules issue that I ran into, um, as well as uh, unrelated to that, but also Nerdoc, uh, I believe, added to the core and certainly pointed me towards some examples of devices with built-in I2C displays, which I was looking at over the weekend. So thank you to them for that. Um, thank you to you, Dan, for adding the fallback logic to fetch submodules. Uh, as well as pointing me towards the way to get that newer version of Git that you mentioned. Um, uh, thank you to, uh, uh, on GitHub, the user BiffoBear, who's made, um, over the last while, several improvements to the Ethernet library, the WizNet, uh, I think it's 5K library, as well as uh, working back and forth with me through feedback during the prog uh, process on all those PRs. Um, hug report to Jose David for uh, new functionality inside bitmap tools in the core that's been PR'd, uh, and then a group hug for everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, next up is uh, Jeff. Hi, so I have a couple of hugs. One for you, Dan, for testing and finding two important bugs in the PWM audio out implementation on IMXRT, including the Metro M7. Uh, to Ketney for chatting and listening to me lecture about MOSFETs when it was totally irrelevant to the matter at hand, and a group hug. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, next up, I'll read Jose David's. Um, thanks to S-OL for submitting a PR for fixing the tile grid flip function in Blinkguide Display I.O. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, next up is Katney. I'm busy telling other people to uh, do things for the meeting and not doing my own thing. Um, okay, so uh, first up, I have a hug for DJ Devin3 and Paul Cutler for joining the brand new 3D printing helpers role on Discord. If you need assistance with uh, 3D printing, they uh, are around um, already helping a bunch. And uh, so basically nothing will... Uh, nothing will be changing there. Um, they will just be more obviously... Uh, obvious when they're available. Uh, thanks to Scare for suggesting the new role and uh, those that would be a good fit. Um, to Dan and Naradoc for attempting to help me with an issue updating my local Circuit Python repo. It turned out to it turned into a fresh clone, but I left the other one in place in case we can figure out how to fix it. Thanks to Mister Certainly for helping out with a talk proposal and talk content for an upcoming upcoming presentation for the PyCon Education Summit. Uh, thanks to Toddbot, Tammy Makes Things, Tectric, and John Park for contributing a personal moment each to my talk. Thank you to Maker Melissa for adding the Feather RP2040 DVI to circuitpython.org slash downloads and a group hug. Okay, thank you. And that reminds me, uh, your first item about the 3D printing helpers role. Also, thank you and whoever else helped you getting the little yeah. icons in for the uh, roles, which are very cute and useful. You are welcome. That was uh, a group effort on the part of a bunch of the Discord helpers uh, and myself and also Phil because uh, I can't, only Phil can edit the um, admin role. So to get our to get the admin icon put in, Phil had to join us as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Next up is Maker Melissa. I wanted to give a hug to um, S-OL for fixing a title grid issue in Blinka Display I.O. and group hug to everyone else. All right, thank you. All right, um, next up are three uh, people who are out, so I'll read all theirs. Uh, first, Mark Ambler. Thanks to Dan H. for helping me with Git when I yet again broke a PR by trying a rebase. Yes, rebases are easy to screw up. <laughs> And it happens to happen to me too. All right. Um, next is uh, Tammy Makes Things, uh, but who's text only, so I'll read theirs. Um, thanks to Cadney for wonderful conversations and support lately, and a group hug to everyone for being awesome. This community is amazing, and I'm glad to be a part of it. All right. And finally, um, from Scott, um, 
Thanks to Dan H. for swapping meetings with me due to Ari, that's his son, uh, being sick today. Okay. All right. All right. Next up is status updates. Uh, status updates. Let me put a timestamp here. Oops. Um, status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. Okay. So I'll start with my st status updates. Um, I updated the tiny USB library in CircuitPython again, and it'll probably happen a few more times. There are a bunch of new additions and changes having to do with USB host, and there'll be more. And also there was um, tiny USB removed the Git submodules uh, in it, and there's a different way to add submodules now that involves a Python script. So it makes it less likely th that when you um, add the submodule and uh, update the submodules in a casual way, it will bring in all kinds of unnecessary stuff. Um, as I mentioned, kind of alluded to in status updates, uh, I changed the way um, make fetch submodules worked in the um, CircuitPython make file, the top level make file, to use partial clones, which is a really neat feature of Git that um, basically does a lazy fetch of things in a submodule so that you don't have to fetch everything, but all the metadata is there. So that if you need something and ask for it, it'll, it'll get put there automatically. Um, this solves some problems uh, uh, that were present using uh, when we were using shallow clones as submodules. When if something was a shallow clone, you couldn't find out its tags easily and you couldn't move back and forth in time. Um, but it turned out that not everybody had this. So I, I changed this uh, so that it, there's a fallback to the old way of doing it, but I would encourage you to update your Git if you can. Um, and also I added make, make remove submodules, which cleans out everything um, so that if your fetch submodules get screwed up in some way or some aspect of submodules changes, like we changed what a sub, which submodule points to where, um, this will help you clean up that. Um, I'm, work, I'm wrangling a bunch of um, changes to the main branch to get an 8.1.0 beta.1 out soon. I would hope that would be like within the next few days because uh, there's only a couple more PRs that I need to approve before I feel like it's ready for the beta. Um, I worked for some um, on the animated GIF uh, code Gambler, Mark Gambler, Tony One had um, some fixes to animated GIFs, but it caused some, some um, builds that were on the edge of being too full to overflow. So I figured out a way to save some more space there with some compiler options. And it should be good for a while. Um, I did some minor fixes, uh, including um, on the um, Metro M7-1011 board, the airlift serial pins were flipped around due to a difference in the way the schematic was labeled. And I've started to work on i.mx issues, um, starting with a complaint from a while ago that Bitbang.io was not working properly. And then uh, finally, somebody over the weekend was trying to do uh, raw HID and was having trouble. And it turns out it doesn't really work right. And I think I have a way to get around the problems that we have. And hope that person will test it and hopefully it'll work. All right, uh, next up, I'll read C. Grover's, take a timestamp. Um, uh, C. Grover, uh, to improve some recent Wi-Fi reliability issues, refactored the foundational AIO modules for a new version of the workshop corrosion monitor. The latest version of CircuitPython greatly simplified Wi-Fi connectivity and appears to be efficient enough to incorporate uh, open weather map conditions along with the local sensor data to improve corrosion prediction and response. The new core modules are running a week-long reliability test, so now there's time to pick up the next thing, which is a precision VCO project and PCB assembly. Pulled out the stencil, solder paste, and tweezers. And next up is um, 
DJ Devin three, who's not. No, oh, I am here. Oh, you are here. Okay, great. Yep. Go ahead. Thanks to thanks to Katney for the ping. Okay. Uh, I've come to the conclusion there's a problem with my uh, Feather M4 Express, or there's a bug um, with how it handles pull up and pull down with a switch, just a real basic switch. Uh, it works with the Feather RP2040 and the ESP32 S2 with no problem, but I just cannot get it to work with the uh, the Feather M4 Express. Um, so if, if someone can help test that, that has one, just run a latest stable release and a real basic switch demo uh, and we can see if that's actually a bug or more than likely just user error uh, i started on a duplicate 100 watt mailbox uh, for my family member the amplifier has a blue built-in bluetooth classic 240 watt forum speakers four inches i've already tested the speakers and the amp together they're very very loud um twice as loud as, as my mail boom box uh, I scrapped the idea of using the distance sensor for the mailbox trigger and instead going into read switches, um, which Patney did on her mailbox, which is, it's that is just a much easier way to do it. The distance sensor values are, I mean, it, it's kind of slow to update as well as being very power hungry. And if it's in a mailbox, you're going to want something extremely low power and the read switches just make the most sense. So I just swapped everything out to try to do the read switches. Um, and I want to thank Katney for the excellent um, Wi-Fi mailbox guide. It has been a source of reference material during this project. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I am gathering components to attempt a small image transmission from a 320 by 240 uh, TTL UART JPEG camera from inside the mailbox using LoRa RFM. Uh, I've seen other projects that have done that. Uh, in particular, I think it was husky lens on micropython but we don't have that uh same kind of library um so i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to go about that uh i do know that you can take a um a regular color image and downscale it and image process it in black and white so that you can reduce the the amount of packets but it's still going to have to transmit sequential packets of a lot of data and then combine that on the other side uh, so if anyone has ideas on how to achieve that I would be grateful and that's what I'm up to okay thank you okay uh, next up is foamy guy all right thanks Dan um, uh, both last week and actually uh, this week so far as well I've been doing lots of testing in the Ethernet library review some of the PRs over there um, in particular, uh, I've got Wireshark set up so that I can capture some traffic back and forth between the uh, the microcontroller with its Ethernet featherwing and the router that it's fetching its IP address from to try to help uh, figure out any remaining issues with one of the PRs there that changes the state machine logic inside that library. Um, I have still been fighting a little bit with some random uh, like segmentation faults and other similar issues during builds of CircuitPython, uh, but luckily it hasn't actually frozen my computer in quite a while now, so I'm feeling good about that. Um, and uh, another thing that potentially, hopefully, will have fixed it is I took the case apart and gave it a nice clean out, including uh, some of the air intakes, which had gotten a bit dusty, so fingers crossed that we're going to be all good moving forward on that one. Uh, I have been... Uh, learning how to make device definitions. I've never tried to add a device to CircuitPython before, so I've been practicing on some existing ones, just copying it and tweaking a few things. Um, in particular, I have uh, made a couple of definitions for devices with uh, what are you know technically external displays, but wiring them up as though it's an internal one, so it shows up on board.display just to figure out what all the parts that are involved in that are. Uh, and hopefully get to a point where I'd be able to do it on a, an actual device that doesn't have a real definition uh, at some point. Um, and then uh, for this week, uh, I haven't taken a look too far ahead, but one thing I know for sure I want to get into is uh, checking out the bitmap tools PR that's inside the core. Um, and that's what I got. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Next up is Jeff. Hi. So last week, it seemed like it took a long time to get there, but I got I2S out to work on the Metro M7. 
and I quickly followed that up with support for PWM audio out because they both use the I2S functionality internally, uh, but there are two pins that you can uh, route the audio signal to and it comes out as a PWM signal. Um, and another thing that's really cool is you can mix at least 12 voices simultaneously using audio mixer that's uh, with 22 kilohertz and 16-bit mono samples. Um, so that's a really cool advance in kind of the level of audio that we can do in CircuitPython since it's a 500 megahertz uh, chip with lots of processing time. Um, I changed some error checking in struct.pack to better match the core of CircuitPython. Now incorrect use of struct.pack with too many or too few arguments is detected and you get an exception and before it would just um, either treat all the remaining arguments as though they weren't needed or um, just ignore any excess ones, which was incompatible with standard Python. So that will be a, an incompatible change, but um, we, I think we put it in 8.1 anyway, uh, even though it's technically a little incompatible. It's only for code that was wrong. I fixed a socket problem on Pico that was affecting 8.1 betas, but not 8.0. And I've been working on a second guide using OpenAI's ChatGPT, which I teased on Mastodon, and uh, I hope it will be ready sometime this week. So either check out my social media posts or wait for the guide to come out. It, it's a lot of fun. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, next up is Jose David's. I'll read theirs. Um, made a PR to make a circle with bitmap tools in the core. Uh, that PR is currently under review. Made some library documentation, um, reviewed PRs, created a new sensor library for the magnetometer QMC5883L sensor, and took a look, look at uh, something called Sphinx Autodoc Type Hints Project. This extension will take the type hints and automatically include the information in RTD. That will be interesting. Okay. Um, next up is Katni. Hello. Last week, I uh, started the Feather RP2040 DVI guide, brought in a new community helper on Discord, created the 3D printing helpers role on Discord, added two folks. Uh, they were hugged earlier. I tweaked the circuitpython.org libraries page a bit. Um, when, it was when it was originally written, the community bundle wasn't as significant as it is now. Um, and there's there's a couple other things that the wording was a bit odd um it doesn't really fit our you know uh current situation so um i tweaked that around uh so that the bundles get basically equal billing um and made sure that the rest of the wording made sense i still have to go through it a little bit i fought with updating my local copy of circuit python did not figure out a solution but left it in place in case one comes up and cloned circuit python fresh uh, this week finished the feather rp2040 dbi guide uh, the pinouts page needs one item updated the circuit python essentials template pages need to go in and they need to be prepared in a way that they can be shared with um, a whole series of upcoming feather rp2040 boards uh, the Arduino Blink and I2C scan pages require the board, and then I have the power management and factory reset pages. Um, once that is done, I'll be starting on the Feather RP2040 RFM stuff. Uh, that board is not available yet, so we need a CircuitPython board definition for it, and then I'll do the fritzing object and the pretty pins diagram. Um, two sort of complicated things that are necessary for all microcontroller guides. And then eventually the guide and also eventually the RFM uh, version of the mailbox project, which was my original build of it. Um, but uh, Lamore wanted me to wait until this board was available to do the RFM version of it. So here we are. Um, and uh, I'm going to finalize the updates for the circuitpython.org slash libraries and PR that. And then as time permits, I'll be documenting my grow light and time lapse projects. And in other news, I'm confirmed to do a talk at the PyCon Education Summit, so it's time to get writing. Okay, thank you, and Kathy, congrats on the summit talk. Okay, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, last week I finished uh, a chat GPT powered bare enough to show a demo on Show and Tell, and I worked on testing various. Um, 
text-to-speech software in order to find an improved uh, voice. And I fixed some issues with my code and circuitry, which had resulted in some overheating and damaged parts. Um, I added, and I also added the DVI feather to circuitpython.org. Uh, this week I'm working on writing a guide for the chat GPT bear, and uh, I need to hack together another bear and update the photos as I write the guide. And that's it. All right, thank you. And now the last two are people who aren't here, so I'll read theirs. First, Tammy Makes Things. Um, well, Tammy Makes Things is here, but not uh, uh, doing voice today. Last week, started reworking my website to focus on project write-ups for projects I've done, am doing, and started writing up some of those things. Working through some KiCad tutorials, designing a small audio amplifier circuit for an upcoming project for my nephew, which is making a map of sound with an oscilloscope, since he's very into maps right now. This week, trying to get more stuff, uh, more of the stuff I'm working on documented on my website. I'm hoping to jump off from the KiCad tutorials I'm working on to create my own minimal RP24, RP24, RP2040 board as a learning exercise, and now building the audio amplifier I'm designing. Hopefully more, but I'm not sure. In other news, I want to give a hearty thanks to the community for your support and understanding as I've been AWOL recently. I'm dealing with some pretty challenging medical stuff right now, but we finally have a hopeful path forward. I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks, we'll pin down what the path back to health is, and soon I'll be able to return to doing all the things that I love. All right, well, uh, get well soon, we, we say from all of us. And finally, um, from Scott Tanut, uh, let me take a timestamp here, um, working on supporting the rest of the IMX RT EVKs, the 1020 and 1050 work, but the 1040 is weird. I've made a script for generating pins and pin muxing arrays for chips. Look briefly into speeding up flash reads, and there is room for improvement there. We'll need to add a way for reconfiguring flash after boot up because TinyUF2 will use conservative settings. All right, so we're all done with status updates. Um, and now we have the in the weeds section, which is an opportunity for long form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any in the weeds the topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. So I just have a side mention here. Um, one of the things I didn't put for, that's in the Python for microcontrollers newsletter, but I didn't put up top is um, Arduino is um, coming out with a new board that is kind of a, I think that to be the next generation uh, regular Arduino board. It's the R4 board, the current Arduino board, which uses an AVR, an Atmega 328P, um, uh, is called the R4, and it would be releasing in May. You can read about it on the Arduino.cc website. website. It has a 5-volt Renesis Cortex-M4 chip. That chip has 256 KB of flash, but it only has 32 KB of RAM and it has no external flash, um, unlike most CircuitPython boards. So um, you may think that this board is kind of interesting, but it's not probably gonna be not really a great CircuitPython board. It's sort of like, in, in some ways, similar to the SAMD, the Arduino Zero board, which is an M0 processor, um, and was 3.3 volts, and also had 256 KB of flash and 32 KB of RAM. So the M4 has hardware floating point, but otherwise there's not a lot that we can take advantage of here. Like, so the CircuitPython, the CircuitPy drive, for instance, would be need to be inside part of the 256 KB of internal flash. So this is kind of like a kind of a souped up um, uh, trinket or something. <laughs> you know, it has more pins than that, but, uh, and it's 5-volt compatible, which makes it kind of interesting, maybe for some applications. The other thing about this board is that, interestingly, there'll be a version with an optional ESP32 S3 Wi-Fi um, coprocessor. And of course, that means the ESP32 S3 is a far more capable processor than um, the smaller Renesis chip, I mean, at least in terms of memory and stuff. So it's it's a little bit, the. Uh, 
the tail wagging the dog, I'm not sure. But it will be a coprocessor. Other than that, we don't know too many details. Because I'm just sure, because it will be talked about a lot, I just kind of wanted to uh, set some realistic expectations about it. All right, that's it. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to talk about? All right, we will wrap up. So um, next week, um, thank you. This has been the Circuit Python Weekly for um, March 23rd, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, this meeting will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. You can visit adafruit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Um, the next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern and 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. Um, and uh, just remember that you can, the meeting will be on Discord just like it is now. And if you want to be notified, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython East this role on Discord. So see you next week. Thank you, everybody. And I will stop recording. <laughs>